What's going on, y'all? Um, I decided to do this video before I left for work, but um, basically, it's just going to be a summarization of a whole bunch of stuff. Not really a lot, but some stuff that I probably want to talk about, and I know y'all want to hear about the Soul Train Awards, but um, I didn't do a What It Is video this past weekend because it really wasn't much to talk about, and bitch, I was still on vacation mode. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was still on vacation mode, slash the fact that I did have to go to work you know, for a few hours, and I was still just over, I was just so tired this weekend, you just don't know, and I was literally drunk the whole weekend, but that's never, that's, that's not the issue, but sometimes you just need a break, but it really wasn't much to talk about, if you saw my Love and Hip Hop Hollywood review from last week, you know how I felt about the Ferguson, um, decision that came down with Darren Wilson not being, um, indicted, I already knew that was gonna happen, and I knew people was gonna get mad, and at one point, I did say, you know, I don't care at this point, you know, what people do. Like, y'all can go out there and protest and, and do what you do. But, you know, it's just so unfortunate that the negativity of the um, people that go out there and protest and stuff get broadcast on news and get, you know, sent around in the media. And that's what everybody focuses on. No one really focuses 100% on the fact that there were actual pe peaceful protesting going on, you know, what really got the media's attention is the rioting, it's the looting, and all this stuff. And once again, I never understood the point of it, okay? It don't help anybody, and it don't make you look good. But that it's, it's, it's fucked up all the way around. Um, I did see this this little clip or whatever about the lady, the uh, assistant DA or whoever the fuck. No, assistant prosecuting, the assistant district... Uh, Sister prosecutor, whatever the fuck, the bitch that gave the jurors, um, the 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 law saying that the um, you know that the police in Missouri has the right to legally shoot a person who runs away from them or you know turn it back on them or some shit like that. But that law was in 1974, or something like that, and it was you know strict out, uh, found unconstitutional in 1985 or something like that. So you gave them an old law. So that's probably what they was going by and didn't really explain fully when you came back to get this from them. I was just like, it was all so fucked up. It was like, what the fuck did he need a defense attorney? If you got the prosecution, just trying to make it easy, give it an easy win. They weren't going to never indict him or whatever, but you know, it's all fucked up. It's truly disheartening, but I don't know. I'm over it. I'm I'm not over the, you know, I'm just over the bullshit. That's what it is. And then you have this situation with Tamir um, Rice, the little 12-year-old boy who was shot in Cleveland um, because he was playing with a um, BB gun. And this situation is different than all the other ones for the simple fact that it is multiple people and multiple factors that are to blame. The cops are not 100% to blame. You know, I had posted this on my Facebook earlier and, you know, people was like, well, the cops should have just pulled up a few feet away and not directly on him and told him, you know, negotiated, you know, from the car or whatever and all this stuff. And I'm like, well, in my hood, the cops will pull right up on you and tell you to get your ass out <laughs> and then ask questions and all that shit. So... I mean, maybe it works differently, you know, in different areas. But um, basically what happened with that situation, he was outside. He had a little BB gun. And it was supposed to be like this neon yellow or neon orange little sticker thing on it that shows that it's not a real gun. And that device, that little piece of it was not on the end of the gun. So you couldn't really tell that it was a fake gun. It was a little BB gun or whatever. And he was outside. If you saw the little one-minute clip the day that I saw he was just outside in the park, whatever, playing with it, pointing and all this stuff. And I guess a, dis uh, a person that was coming past um, saw it and felt uncomfortable about what was going on. He called it in. I don't know if it was a he or a she. They called in to the cops and basically was like, he's waving his gun. I'm scared. You know, I don't know if it's real or fake. The dispatcher told the cops this, but did not tell them that the gun could possibly be fake. And therefore, they pulled up and did what they did, shot the little boy in his stomach. And, you know, from what I'm hearing, they did have a discussion. They were talking for like three minutes or so. And I'm sitting here like, and then it was like he reached in, I guess, to get the gun. And I don't know if he, I don't know if he was reaching to get the gun or to show, you know, to show them that, hey, it's fake or whatever. I don't know what was going on. But the fact of the matter is, I blame, we don't know 
all the factors to this story. I don't know. I want to blame the parents for letting, you know, in this, in this climate, climate that's going on right now, where it's, you know, the shit that's going on with the cops and especially young black males and stuff like that. You need to sit down and talk to your kids and tell them, look, this the do's and don'ts. If the cops show up, you oblige by what they say, you know what I'm saying? They say put your hands up, put your hands up. As soon as you see them bitches roll up, put your hands up and drop to the ground, okay? Do something. Don't don't make any sudden movements so they can't, um, you know, try to say that you tried to attack them or whatever the fuck. Even though some of them still crooked as fuck and they still gonna try to say that shit. But... I don't know if them parents really knew that he had this BB gun. It's so many factors. Like, if the parents knew and gave him this gun, why? Especially, I'm saying why in this climate of the things that's been going on recently. Why would you allow your child to have it? If not, that's fucked up. We don't know. And I, I, from what I've heard, I heard some people say that it wasn't even really his gun or whatever. So, see, there's another factor right there. I've heard some people say that it was mental illness. And I think it was really fucked up on the cops' part for them to have shot this boy, okay? And that's one thing. Maybe you're trained to do that, but you couldn't administer CPR or any type of first aid for four fucking minutes until somebody else came along. And then saying basically that they're not trained to do that with the gunshot. Girl, what? What? Are you serious? Hell, even I... At my job at the library, we took CPA, CPR classes, and we know what to do when somebody passed the fuck out or, you know, uh, to, to help, you know, stabilize them until the uh, ambulance come or whatever. Like, really, y'all couldn't do nothing. You couldn't get over there and put, you know, try to put pressure on the womb or whatever the fuck and, and do something. And it was a rookie cop, and then it was an older cop. And I'm sitting here like, both of y'all, that was fucked up. Because if they would have helped, he probably still would have been alive. And that's fucked up. But... It's so many factors involved in this, and I'm not going to 100%ly, 100%ly, 100% put it all on the cops. So, y'all tell me how y'all feel about it. Um. Anyway, moving on from that, uh, the Soul Train Awards. This is what y'all probably been wanting to hear. And it really wasn't much. Wendy Williams hosted the Soul Train Awards. First of all, Chris Brown opened up the Soul Train Awards literally with a medley of all his little hits. Excuse me, miss. Yeah. I was like, oh, shit. And then, popping. That was my look. When Chris Brown first city came out, popping was on repeat. You couldn't tell me shit. That... That little nigga was the shit back in the day. He somewhat still is, you know, clean it up a little bit. But that little, that's my motherfucking nigga right there. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. I just went into a, a little mode right quick. Okay, I'm back. Because you never know when, y'all can't tell me, when somebody that even if they had a fucked up time in their life or whatever, and all of a sudden, you know, you see them perform and they go through all they hits and you be like, Damn, these motherfuckers had hits. Like when um Usher did that, I think, at the BET Awards, she was like, fuck, this nigga has some hits on his ass. And you know every last one of them. That's how I was feeling when Chris Brown did this shit. And I will say, you know, Chris Brown did a really good job because in re this is probably one of his best performances out of most of the recent performances that he done this year. You know, he was still a little bit out of breath, but he was really singing live and it didn't, it, it seemed like that got better too. And I was like, oh my God, Christopher, you did really good, you know? And he was dancing his little light-skinned ass off. I was like, okay. I was happy, you know? I was like, good job, little boy. And then, you know, Wendy Williams was the host. Her little intro, I didn't get it. I know it's Vegas and all the little shows that's out there. And then Boris Cujo was the man in the mask, like the Phantom of the Opera. And they out there dancing. And I was like, ugh, get your breath out his face. God damn. Nicole, come get your man. Check him for rabies or something. But other than that, you know, I could have did without Wendy. She was okay. She was okay. She wasn't, she didn't get on my nerves. But, uh... Things that stood out, oh my God, when Stephanie Mills came out there and sang Home. When I think of home, I think of a place where there is love overflowing. Look, listen, and the Jackson 5 American Dream was on early, girl, earlier today till Sunday. Bitch, please. Um, The Cool in the Gang uh, tribute that they did 
with all of the hits and stuff. And you had Tank come out there singing. That first when Tank came out there, I was like, are you being a hype man? What the fuck is going on? Why is he out here? And then he started singing the song. And I said, okay, bitch, you better go ahead. And you had Dougie Fresh out there introducing everybody. And then you had um, Tank came out there. They did that. Somebody else did something. Then you had Joe and Tamar come out there. Let me tell you something. Tamar started off shaky. I went here for the very beginning of that song that she was singing. And then all of a sudden, you know, towards the end, it's like the initial nerves kind of fucked her up at the beginning. But she got it together towards the end because she was hitting them notes. And I said, okay, bitch, there you go. Um, other than that, I really wasn't here for what she had on. I wasn't here for none of those looks that she had on. No shade. Y'all could say them shit was fine. Them shit was not. <laughs> okay, whatever. Um, after that, well, you had Eric Benet come out there to do Ladies Night, the original version of Ladies Night, and then they closed out the show with um <laughs> uh Lil Kim. When they <laughs> bitch, when the curtain came up and opened up, Lil Kim was standing there like she was ready. I said, you better go ahead and do that shit, bitch. She was just fucking ready. And look, Kim came out there, did her shit. The brat came out there. They First of all, they let the um clip play of Left Eye doing her verse. The brat came out there. The brat came out there like it was still 1997. I was like, that is West Side brat. Okay, West Side Chicago, the brat. And, you know, she did her thing. Missy was over there on the other stage like, bitch, I know y'all ain't gonna forget about me. Okay, fuck this shit. I'm finna do my shit. I said, ah. You know, I was really into it. And that was one of the best, better performances for me. I love seeing, you know, the real talents get together and redo this stuff. Like, when they did the, um, <clears throat> the Brandy remix on the, what was it? BT Hip Hop Awards. With MC Light and Yo-Yo. Bitch, Yo-Yo, Lady of Rage and them. Total was out there on the stage with them. I said, oh shit. And Total, uh, uh, Lady of Rage still had a puff. A rough, rough and tough with my Afro puff. Hey, come on now. Come on now. MC Light was out there. She did Summertime. Um, Tanache did a performance. Tanache did one of the better performances because that bitch gave you um, vocals. She was singing live. She was one of the few acts that was actually out there singing live. She was singing live. She gave you a little breakdown, dance breakdown in a couple of, um, you know, couple of sessions of her little time on stage. And then she sang a couple of songs and she actually sang her shit. And I was like, that is good because Tanache, I remember when she started, I didn't even know how to pronounce her name. I didn't even know who the fuck she was. And she was on... The BET red carpet probably two BTs ago, two BET awards ago, or maybe last year. And she was performing on their red carpet. Now she on the main stage of the Soul Train Award. I said, go ahead, bitch, do your thing. Um, Jodeci. <laughs> Jodeci came out there, bitch. They was lip singing like a motherfucker to the original track, to the original CD, okay? I'm sitting here like, I got this CD. I got all of these songs, and you sound exactly like the CD, so many years later, stop playing with me, bruh. Stop playing. But see, I let that shit slide because Devontae came out there with that ponytail right here, perch. But it was slicked down. And it was like, you know how, I guess this is how y'all put y'all hair in that little ponytail. Then they put that fake-ass ponytail on there. That was the beginning stages, and he just left the tail backstage. But, bitch, it was, it was everything, you know. I just kept on remembering the time on that clip when, um... <laughs> Casey and JoJo was on stage at some place, and Casey, JoJo fell the fuck out. KC looked at his ass and just kept on singing while everybody else trying to see if the nigga okay. He just kept on singing like he ain't see his brother laying dead on the motherfucking stage. I said, please don't have one of those nights. But they did good, and I was, even though they was lip, -like, lip singing like a motherfucker, they get a pass, bitch. They get a pass. I, I enjoyed it. Um, Kim did a good job. And the, what is it, Minnie and Vince or whatever, the two dark guys from Norway. Bitch, I didn't know they asses was from Norway. I said, the fuck, what? I thought y'all was from Africa. I mean, they could be from Africa or have African parents. I mean, because Nick was black as fuck. But no shade. I ain't trying to be stereotypical, but I'm just saying. That just threw me for, uh, threw me for a loop. But, you know, they did a good job. I think they won Best New Artist. Chris Brown won two awards. Beyonce won two awards. Bitch, they had Michelle presenting 
um, an award that <laughs> Beyonce won. And I was like, hmm. She was like, girl, call me. I got your award. Bitch, y'all don't give a fuck about no um, Soul Train Award. Y'all got to watch Fish My Quiet. I love that show. But that was basically the Soul Train Awards for me. Put down what y'all um, favorite performance was or whatever. And speaking of BT. BT did it right this time because they got this show, Nellyville. At first, I was looking at it like, hmm, how is it going to be? I hope it's not going to be ratchet as fuck. But when I watched the first episode, and then I didn't even know the second episode came on right after the BT, after the Soul Train Awards. But it originally comes on on Tuesdays at 8 o'clock. Um, it's going to be the episode that came on last night. And then it's going to be a new episode that's going to come on right directly after. So if you didn't catch it last night, the second episode, you get the second and third episode tomorrow on Tuesday. So I'm keeping y'all in the know because I got to catch up to that. But I love it. I love it. I love the way he interacts with his kids. And I love the fact that, you know, the kids think of each other close like they're like brothers and sisters. And I love that talk that the boy Sean had with... um. Nana and, 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 and his little sister about what was going on and how he always tried to keep them close to him and, you know, seeing what's going on. I just love it. It was it was a very wholesome show and I like it. But tell me what y'all watching and what was y'all view of the BT the Soul Train Award and I'll see y'all later. Peace. Oops, stop.